crafty friends, my name is Jessica and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a card for you using one of my most recent ink blended panels from my color blend series. This is color blend series number 11 and we're going to pair it with some die cuts, some jewels, some vellum and some glitter. So this ink panel is from the color blend series number 11 and I will indicate it in a card up at the top and it is Tide Pool, Aspen, and Cabbage. I absolutely fell in love with this panel after creating it and knew I instantly had to turn it into a card. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking a little bit of pearlescent watercolor and we're just splattering the background. And I did a concentration of a diagonal splatter kind of through the right bottom corner to the upper left corner. So that's where I focused a lot of those splatters at. And I love the little directional thickness of that, the grouping of the splatter that's going that way. So now we're gonna go ahead and build our die. This is a fairly simple card. So for this die, we're using the Wild About You. And I cut it out of 110 Nina cardstock twice. And then I'm gonna layer it with that Simon Says Stamp champagne cardstock on top. If you're new here, hi again. I do not use stamping blocks for stamping, or it's very rarely that I do. I use them to create pressure on die cuts to ensure that they adhere correctly when using liquid glue. What is something that you guys use in your craft room for not the purpose that it's intended? I think I've asked that before, but I always love reading your comments about that. So now that we've added that champagne glitter cardstock on top, we're gonna go ahead and do the tittle. That is the circle above the I or the lowercase j. It is known as a tittle for anybody who didn't know. And I'm struggling with it. These are really little and it's hard sometimes to get those layered up. And it would probably have been easier had I adhered the bottom one to the back of the shadow die and then built it that way. But you know, sometimes brains are not functioning on all the cylinders and this is definitely one of those nights. So we're gonna use this foxglove die and I'm cut out a second set of the florals. There is only, I think three of each size in the original die, but if you cut it out twice, you're gonna get double that and that's what I did here. I had a little helper joining me during this video. As you can see, she's very uh, stern and telling me where I need to put these die cuts and what ink color I need to use in order to accomplish this. But we're gonna be using Rainbow Splash. This is ballet. This is the lightest pink in the Rainbow Splash color. And Rainbow Splash is a line that Simon Says Stamp offers and it's more affordable, but offers a really great starting point for new crafters. There are, I think, about 12 colors, and they're all primary with some uh, grays and browns as well. But they're a great little set to get if you're just starting out or if you're interested but not sure if you're ready to commit, but you need to get started. It's a great little line to get started with. They have stamps and dye inks and dyes and stencils and embossing folders. So I highly check it out if you're thinking about dipping your toes into the card making world, but just know it can be a very slippery slope. So here I am just using the small brush to just add a little hint of pink onto the tips of all of these florals for the fox glove dye. I didn't want it to be too dark. I definitely want that background that we created to shine, but add a little pink to offset how this dye is going to sit on it. I wanted it to pop just a little bit and you'll see it'll, it's gonna be just enough. So we're gonna go ahead and add the Wild About You dye to a shadow layer and I chose vellum just to give it um, a little bit of separation from that background. It'll help that white, because I used a white uh, glitter cardstock. It's gonna help it pop a little bit, but it's not gonna be super noticeable because the vellum isn't gonna show too much, but it's gonna let that die cut pop off of the panel. So I went ahead and cut out the Foxglove die out of Nina 110 pound and Simon Says Stamp 130 pound cardstock. And the reason why I did that is because I cut the florals out of 
Simon Says Stamp 130 pound cardstock, and it's because it's my favorite for ink blending. But the reason why I cut it out of the for the stem, even though I did no ink blending on it, is because the paper is just a little bit more yellow toned than the Nina cardstock. And so I wanted them to match since I didn't fully ink up the florals. I wanted to make sure that the whites matched. Now, here's a tip. I started off by putting these florals up at the top, but I didn't want to have them layer underneath as I went down. So how to, and what I mean by that is I'm starting with the bottom so that it's like a Christmas tree moving up so that the bottom layer is going to be underneath the next layer and it's just going to build like that. If I had started with the top, then you're covering up those, well, you're potentially covering up the florals on the top and then your bottom layer is going to be your most forward towards the, um, the foreground. And so for this one, you definitely want to stop Start, not stop, start on the bottom layer to ensure that you're layering the florals appropriately. As I'm building this and pulling the florals off, you can start to see that pink, how it's not really dark, but it's just enough there to show a little bit of interest for these florals. So like I said, I double cut these florals out. So this is definitely more than what you would get if you just ran the dye through once, but I love the fullness that you get. I'm originally from the state of Oregon and foxglove grew wild all over out there. And so this dye means more to me than just a beautiful floral dye from Simon Says Stamp. It, it, it's a little piece of home. And so I love using it. Um, I really love the look that it gives when you layer it full like this. Foxgloves are very full, at least the ones in Oregon were. And so that's why I wanted to cut it out twice to ensure that I got a great full floral for it. Another tip for this dye is notice that the florals, and I'm just going to call them trumpet florals, uh, the way that they're kind of shaped or trumpetly, they kind of swing out. So when you're building this, you want to make sure that the ones that are all kind of pointing, we'll say to the left, you're putting them on the left side of the floral and the other same it goes for the other side. If you start mixing them, it's not going to quite look right. Although it could look fun. I'm not sure. But foxgloves, you know, I mentioned that Christmas tree look. They definitely have that fanning out and where they point out and kind of feather towards the bottom. So now here we are just me fiddling. This is my favorite thing to do and trying to figure out how I'm going to layer this card up. I did decide to trim the panel down to a four by 5.25. And then we're going to go ahead and pop it up to add a little bit of extra dimension. I love trimming my backgrounds down to have that very thin border from the card base and then popping it up with foam tape. I do have all of the products used in this video today listed below in the video description. Please note that they are affiliate links that I'm using. And what that means is that if you click on a link and shop with me, I do receive a small commission at no extra cost to you. So now we're just going to go ahead. I was trying to decide, do I want the tide pool blue at the top or at the bottom? So I was kind of looking at how the pink played with both of those colors. And I decided that I liked it at the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and add the die cut and the sentiment to this card. I also loved having the sentiment kind of slightly off the panel. That creates a little bit more interest when you have things going off the background. And so that's what I opted for with this die. And because I have it so heavy with those floors, I needed to make sure that I put the glue on the stem to ensure that we weren't gluing those petals down and that just helps keep a little bit more extra dimension to have the petals up off of the background. I tend to be an over adhesor and when you're using vellum, you wanna make sure that you're not using too much glue because you will see it when it dries. It does not dry completely clear necessarily when you're using vellum, it'll, it'll show behind clear, but it'll show through the vellum. I've got my trusty stamp block over there that we're gonna use to ensure that everything is adhering nicely. And now I'm just going to figure out what 
jewels I want to put on this. I knew I wanted to put something, but those new lavender jewels, while they're beautiful, didn't quite pull the way I wanted to. And then the clear ones were just a little bit too shiny. I know, I don't know if that's a real thing, but I just felt like they were. So what I opted for were these clear dew drops that let the background panel come through show the beauty of it, and just add a little bit of extra dimension to this card. And that's going to be it for today. I appreciate you guys stopping over here at my channel and enjoying this video. And I hope that you enjoyed this card enough to hit subscribe and catch me on the next one. Just a reminder that I have all the product links below as well as over on my blog at lovenotesbyjess.com. Thanks for joining me. Take care.